I've been now full-time professional trader since roughly 10 years. So, and I've been trading, I don't know, 12, 13 years. I now went into trading to basically say, I want to become full-time. This just developed or evolved over time, basically. So I, back then, I, I mean, I didn't have literally anyone on my side except my wife. I don't know when I started. I, I just have here on the walls all the FTMO certificates that I have. I'm looking at my first one, 16th of August. I was actually introduced quarter one, quarter two, 2022, only into prop trading again. Wow. Also $1 million. So in total, $2.4 million US dollar in prop firm money. What's up, traders? Welcome to the Day Trading Show. My name is Austin Silver. I'm your host. I appreciate you being here. Today, we sit down with a very special guest. Burned is a funded trader. He's got over $4 million under management. There's a lot to learn here. He's just a great guy, like a very honest, he's about 39 years old, a good man to, to speak with and a good guy to learn from. So you guys are going to love this episode. Make sure you stay all the way through. We talk about some strategy. We talk about psychology. We talk about a lot, really a lot of the conversation is about the funding process, everything you guys want to hear. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future episodes. Burned will definitely be back on the show again soon. Now, enjoy my conversation for today's episode. All right, everybody, Perfect. we are back. We've got another episode. We are sitting down with a special guest today, Mr. Burned. I'm not going to try to say your last name, Burned, so I don't butcher it. Could you that's, say it for us? That's going to be too difficult. Yes, Skolopinski. Skolopinski. There you go. So yeah. Burned is coming in today from Dubai. He's originally from Germany. I know a lot of you have seen his content. He's funded with a couple of different firms. He's going to probably talk to us about some of his success stories, how he's passed challenges, and probably there's been some failures in there, I'm sure, and some lessons learned. So we're going to definitely talk about that. We're not going to look over the mistakes. We uh, just started the podcast a second ago, and we were talking before just about how hard it is to find honest and, and real traders in this business. So it is very refreshing to sit down with somebody like you, Burn. So welcome to the podcast. Austin, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate the invite. Really, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So like I said, from Germany, originally, you told me, now living in Dubai yeah. the last couple of years, what prompted 13, that move? Was 13, it 13 years. So, it's a so you're basically a native <laughs> at this point, it's, right? It's, it's my home. I consider it my home. I haven't been in Germany since 2019. So yes, feel home here. Yeah. I love that. Was it uh was the move prompted for the tax benefit? No, actually, oh, this is a long story. We don't have time to tell the entire story, <laughs> but basically the first the first time I came to Dubai was actually in 2005. It was okay. like holidays or holidays with my oh, 2004 holidays with my parents okay. back then and I I don't know, it was like I always felt I have to be in Dubai, but I never knew what to do. It was just like, I need to be here in that place, even though back then in 2005, everything was literally desert. So the background that you see literally didn't exist. So it was like all desert, right? So, um, so but I just knew Dubai it is, but who the heck knows what I'm going to do there, but Dubai. <laughs> and now, I mean, there's a lot of traders in Dubai. There's a lot of money in Dubai. I mean, it's in my opinion, it's the center of innovation when it comes to like the future of human society. Would you agree? It's it's insane, especially insane. also the crypto world. It's yeah. like it's that it's it will become or it is already the crypto hub, right? You so, think so? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Good. Well, I, I'm curious more about Dubai, but before we get into Dubai, what, could you kind of just catch us up a little bit? Why don't we just say like when you got started trading and how you got introduced into trading? Because I'm curious to know that. So. I've been now a full-time professional trader since roughly 10 years. So, and I've been trading, I don't know, 12, 13 years. And I got introduced almost like everyone else. So I, I was not born as a trader. I basically had a normal, I was studying business in actually in Santa Barbara, uh, California at the UCSB. And um, I came to Dubai, just a normal job, corporate job in the automotive sector. Um, and uh, you know, I just was curious about trading, you know, investing my own hard earned money, not trusting anyone else, you know, with my money, just want to <laughs> invest my money myself. So I started to look around and, you know, I found mentors who taught me trading properly, you know, some former uh, floor traders from Chicago Mercantile Exchange, New York Stock Exchange. Actually, I've been taught from one of the biggest market makers of natural gas futures at the New York Stock Exchange. So, um, wow. um, so 
yes, I found personal mentors who taught me trading professionally right from the beginning. I think this was my advantage. I didn't like, and back then, you know, like 2014, 2013, there was not much content out there. The, the, the environment was the, the environment was completely different. There was not like YouTube or not a lot at least that you can just, you know, Google or YouTube or watch some podcasts and stuff. It was like basically still you have to find in in I mean, you have to find an um, institution, a school, an academy where you literally could go physically to learn. And that's what I did. Right, so, that's awesome. Yes, to cut a long story short, and that's, that's what I did. And then at some point of time, I never, I know, I, I never, I never went into trading to basically say, I want to become full time. This just developed over evolved over time, basically. I first want to have, I wanted to have a secondary income, a plan B, just yeah, just to basically invest my wealth bucket. And then at some point of time, I ventured into swing trading, a little bit of day trading here and there. And, you know, I made the same amount of money than money than in my previous job. And then and I made a little bit more money than in my job. And I said, I had the choice. I had the choice. Hey, should I? Because trading then also became my passion. And I then I just said, okay, let me do, let me, let me, let me quit my job that I anyway didn't like so much. and just did it for the money, right? Anyway, this is usually what people do, uh, their, their corporate jobs, right? They, they are not yep. passionate about that. And, you know, trading is something that I was really then passionate about and became passionate. It's my life nowadays, obviously. So, um, so yes, so I, I followed my passion and became full-time and that's basically the story how I got into trading. It's a great story. I love that. I, I love that it's, I think it's different from a lot of the people, even a lot of our listeners who get into trading to become full-time traders. They didn't just get into it for the secondary income always. They they don't see those middle steps. They just see the end. So it is, I think, good and a, ref, a refreshing approach to hear somebody that's like, look, I was just trying to get a little bit of extra money coming in and it just spiraled. When did you realize you were passionate about trading? Because I think like from the guests I've spoken to and I've been trading for eight years, uh, five of which have been profitable. The first three were terrible. I think passion is the thing that kept me going. And I think it's like the constant when it comes to winning traders. So I'm curious, did you realize when you were passionate about it? Was there a turning point? Did something happen? You make a bunch of money and you're like, I love this. Like, what was it? Well, I think, um, frankly speaking, it was the rewarding system of trading that you feel rewarded right away as opposed to the corporate world that is pretty much very political and you know a lot of hierarchies and you, you don't feel appreciated especially you, you you put in a lot of hours but you get the same salary every month you don't feel like you get rewarded uh, on the spot and with trading it was from the beginning different you feel like I always like kind of you know learning stuff and classroom environment this is where I felt like comfortable and then being in another classroom environment learning something where I can get rewarded right away where I'm the only variable where there are no politics no hierarchies nothing it's just me and I'm the only variable to be like successful or not successful so this is just this made me just from the get-go literally from sitting in the classroom um day one I was like down to that. I was so passionate about that. I felt really like that's that's my thing. Were you always a good student? Because you said you were at University of Southern California. Were you always a good student? Yeah, Santa Barbara, yes. Um, well, not really. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I be respect you to I, say I would, yes. I'd be like, I would, oh, he no, must no, have been no, 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 no. I would be lying. I was I was good in things that I was in. Let's let's put it that way. I was yeah. okay student. I mean, but I was good in things that I was really interested in. Yes. Um, yes. but stuff that I felt why I'm learning that or why I'm learning that the 10th time already. I'm like, it's, I'm not, I don't so, have use. There's no practical application for what I'm learning right now. So what the heck I'm doing here. So it was always it. like more like a, I can use it. I can use it for my real life application. Perfect. I'm interested in, I'm down for it. I'm excited. And then I was good at it. So yeah, there you go. I, I think that is exactly the same for me. Ask my wife, I am listening to podcasts all the time, learning all the time, even if it's random stuff about geography and history that I am interested in. But okay. when I was in school, I hated learning about the things that I was not interested in. So it, it still <laughs> yeah, comes yeah, back same. to passion. It still comes back to actually yeah. liking what you're learning. That's really, yes. really well said. That's a, that's a great little, uh, little insight into your history. So yeah. when you were working in the automotive career, were there people around you that were trading? Like what introduced you to trading? No way. No, back then. I was going to say, especially in the corporate as job, as, nobody as, was talking about as, that. 
Well, it was the complete opposite. And I mean, even today, people look at you if you tell them maybe you're let's let's assume you have a corporate job nowadays and you say like you're trading still people look at you a strange way like you are of course quote unquote a little bit gambling or like right you're just right. putting your money in, in well, because they've probably and, lost know. money or they've lost they've had friends that have lost money so they have preconceived ideas yeah so back then i i mean i didn't have literally anyone on my side except my wife right people i was always I'm a person who is really outspoken when it comes to things that I'm passionate about, even though I know that people might not appreciate it. I was saying from day one, hey, I'm taking, I was actually, when I took trading classes back then, I took like sometimes days off, weeks off, even half days off. So I was using my leave days to take my trading classes. So I, I was telling everyone, my boss, what I'm doing and people like, you know, you know how it is, the corporate world, they talk behind your back, they might of course, say side eye. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. so um, nobody was on my side, literally, except my wife, and she was always very supportive. But you know what, it was quite interesting. Once I then, you know, resigned and really literally quit my job because of trading everyone, like they came like in the last week where of I was course. Like, still in the office, I still remember they came to my desk, hey, can you show me about trading? Right. What are you I doing? What are you doing? Right. Right. What are you right. doing? Of course. Hey, can you can you can you also teach me? You know that's how it starts. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Literally, this is how it was. Yeah. I right. swear. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's very uh, interesting. Last question about your past. I asked this to some of the guests, and I think my audience will appreciate this. Tell us about who Burned was when he was thirteen. What were you like as a kid? Like, and were you a hungry entrepreneur type of guy? Were you a quiet, shy kid? I just am curious to see how that has developed into you. Also, the guy that like, you're sitting with. I'm now. I'm. I'm old school. I'm 39, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so back then when I was a kid, I, I actually grew up in a small village. Um, so there was this very traditional German village. Uh, you know, I was basically out, you know, playing football, like soccer, you would say in the US, right? Playing soccer every single day, not caring about anything, not caring about tomorrow, not have... I mean, my, my, my family, they run a business, they have a hotel and restaurant business, but I never really enjoyed that kind of business. But I, you know, I didn't think about tomorrow, day after tomorrow. I was just playing football on the fields, you know, enjoying the small town life. So nothing like that, no way. So I, And then you, yeah. it, you just spiraled into this entrepreneur money-making machine now over the last 30 years or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. basically, yes, basically well, I, so you're very I, humble I but evolved. basically i evolved i evolved yes, let's evolved. put it that yeah. way yes yeah. yeah yeah okay good i love that i appreciate the insight into your past now let's talk about some things that we've got going on now when did you first get introduced to the prop firm model and were you trading your own capital i'm assuming you were before that because you've been doing this for a long time so you probably were trading your own money and then something introduced you to prop firms correct yeah oh my gosh this was also a story i mean I was already introduced to prop trading back in 2015. I can't remember the, the prop firm, uh, but back then it was a very weird, kind of even a scammy model, I would say, where you had like weird rules. You could only trade two markets. You had to close your position um, in the evening, every single day. I remember this. This is right when I got into uh, trading. 2015 is the uh, year I first uh, okay. started to see day trading. Okay. I remember that. Some of the firms had very weird rules. Well, really, like unrealistic rules, like unrealistic. not su not not supporting the trader and putting all the lim limitations possible towards the trader. So I always, and that's when I got introduced, and I was like, no way. So uh, screw that, <laughs> right? So um, and I always had then, you know, the years following that first introduction, I always had this perception. Right. I'm, I've always had that perception. I never even looked into prop trading. And um, was it 22? I don't know when I started. I, I just have here on the walls all the FTMO certificates that I have. I'm looking at my first one, 16th of August. I was actually introduced quarter one, quarter two, 2022, only into prop trading again wow. by, a pot by, by a potential business partner. And I was so reluctant to look into prop trading. He was like, there's this FTMO. It's really different. I was like, no, no, no. It's I, I know about prop trading. It's nonsense. And look into it, at least check the website. And I was like, no, I don't do that. Again, I know about prop. I was really, you know, stubborn. I'm a stubborn person usually. So, um, and then I was like, he got me to a point where I ex at least opened the website and I was scrolling down, checked the rules. I was like, okay, this makes sense. 
Mm, this is also good. Oh, I can hold over the weekends. Oh, I can trade all the markets that I trade anyway. Like I, mean, I was so surprised and I was like, give it a shot. And this is where everything started and tr trying. And then this is where st everything started to get out of control. And now we are all into uh, <laughs> prop trading. And this is like a big pillar of our business. And this is like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this actually um, happened. Yeah. Absolutely. That is so similar to me. I saw the prop trading back in the day when I first yeah. started. There was one or two firms, very skeptical of it. I went on trading my own money and a guy I'm working with for the last, he was a student of mine and now is a partner in the business. Mm -hmm. His name is James. James was funded with FTMO for a year, almost two years, a year and a half, two years, getting payouts, trading all these markets that I wanted to be trading, but I couldn't trade with my US regulated broker. Mm -hmm. And then finally I was like, I got to try this. Like, I can't be this old man. I only trade Forex and I trade with my US, right? No, there's all these other ways of making money. And then that just mm. blew the door open. So I'm very similar to you. Like I got into it around the same time, 2020, 2021. So it's crazy. As, and now, especially, no, ahead, yeah, especially, in, especially in the US, it's a little bit different, right? Because there's CFD trading. It's not yes. allowed, right? Yes. So you have to trade the underlying asset, which is the futures. This is what yeah. I learned as well. Basically, I learned everything on futures. I was trading, I was trading futures. I was trading the ES mini, uh, yep. the, the the S&P, the, the Dow Jones, the YM and so on. I was trading futures my whole life. And um, so, yes, so now the entire environment just changed, blew it open. Right? Yeah, it's changed. Yeah, now it open. Now we can trade crypto now. And I mean, it's even for some guys, like I've had guys that have had traditional TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, you know, investment accounts. And now they're trying to mm -hmm. diversify and get involved in the prop trading because it's so easy for them to see like, oh, I can short things now. Like there, some people are not even able to short in their traditional investment account. So it's just, like I said, blown. And I know you spoke with Corey from Surge and Corey has said that many times, like they're trying to evolve and offer and pull people from the traditional brokerage, which is, I think, the future and that's the direction we're going. So now talk to me 100%. about your talk to me about your experience with uh, the funding companies, because I'm sure everybody wants to know how much are you funded with, how many times have you taken a challenge and failed? Can you give us a little insight into that before we talk, you know, actual I'm gonna also get to strategy and risk management a little bit, but like let's yes. not get that deep right away, you know? All right. So just a general overview. So I'm funded yeah. with F team O Max allocation. I'm yep. funded with Search Trader, $1 million, and I'm funded with Vision Star Trades, VST, also $1 million. So in total, $2.4 million US dollar in prop firm money. Amazing. And do you run that all as a, through a copier that the trades get separated out to, or are you trading each account individually? Well, uh, I wanted to make a YouTube video about that. <laughs> Give us a little how little I sneak peek. How, how I handled $2.4 million. Um, That's going to go crazy. Actually, That's going to be I, the I, thumbnail. I, That's going to be the viral clip. Yeah, you know? I know. I can already vision it. Anyway, yeah. but what I do, I, I handle all that these accounts. It's three accounts, basically. It's not that much, right? Yeah. Uh, through, yeah. through, MT, through MT5. Yeah. And the good thing about VST, so Vision Star Trades um, and um, Search Trader, they run on 8 cap. Yep. Right. You know that as well. And they have no uh, market limitation. So they have all product uh, availability and FTMO. You also know that is a little bit different, right? So I like actually to trade CFD stocks. So I'm a little bit more limited on um, FTMO because they have, I don't know, 11, 15 stocks That's available, it. like yeah. these blue, blue chip stocks. And then yeah. on eight cap, I have like 90 stocks available. What I really right. love. Right. And um, so I basically, and then I use um, uh, a third party tool. What I don't like, I'm not a huge fan of MT4, MT5, because it really like, there's no way to properly calculate your position size. Only if you use a third party tool, like a position size calculator, that's what I use from Earn Forex, I think. And it's like an EA. And this yep. is where I can calculate my position size. So for VST and Search Trader, it's quite easy because it's anyway always the same, same, same. But for uh, FTMO then as well, it's just then um, because it's a different account size, it's 400K. Um, and uh, But then also I do the position size manually and then I place it manually. So I want to do everything manually, but it's always like using a third party tool to trust, to basically calculate posi calculate position size. It's not ideal, but it's, it, it is what it is. It's, it's I do the working. same thing. It works. It works. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to come up with a better alternative when you have to run through yes. MT4 and MT5. Definitely. That's, exactly. It's a great yeah. point. You said a couple of times, we, do you have a business partner? I see you're in the office in Dubai. Is this just you running this office solo? Like how, what do you have operations? Uh, no, uh, we are, we are, we are, we are nowadays quite, a, we, are, we are, we are growing really fast as well. So basically I'm also, I'm, I'm the CEO of a licensed investment 
consultancy here in Dubai. So we are licensed investment consultancy, but we focus on trading education with our licensed investment consultancy. And uh, what we do, like basically we have a platform called Online Trading Campus. So we have developed our own platform where, where students have like course material, everyday live trading and uh, one-to-one -one coachings. Um, and this is basically running through our own platform. We even get now uh, um, in the next few weeks an, an, an app um, on the App Store where everyone can basically then uh, get in onto our platform. And um, yes, so we have bas basically, we hired coaches. All of the coaches are verified uh, uh, prop traders. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so we have quite a, a, a big team. So this is basically my office that you see here, but uh, we are growing now uh, quite nicely. So um, I'm really happy with that progress. That That's awesome. Making. Yeah, That's amazing. Amazing. So now that you're funded with three firms, how do you see this? Because you've had a taste of three different firms, commissions, different swaps are different, uh, assets that they offer are different. Is there any advice you could give to a new trader looking to get funded with any firm of you, what you would say, stay away from firms that do this? Because there's the good things, but what would be the things you would say to a trader? Like if the firm does this, avoid it. Is there anything that stands out like a red flag? That's a hard question. I've not, so to be honest, well, well, I have only experienced one firm that I really like was like, what the heck are they doing? Which is, um, I, I, I want to, I can say names, right? It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And if we need I to go names, out yeah? and cut it, we could say yeah. names. So we have to <laughs> okay. cut it enough and we'll cut it out. Yeah. After. So it's, um, it's my opinion basically, right? Because yeah. I've experienced it firsthand. It's fetal crest or that's how they call it. Fetal. Yeah. I've fetal had crest. two guys go to them. Only two people I know have tried them. Okay. They're not as popular. And, 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 and because it's horrible spread like really in, in and sometimes even a platform doesn't work like it's like you're trying to log in into your mt4 mt4 i think it was back then when i tried this i you have like the whole morning you don't have like platform connections and like the spread on 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 um on CFD stock, sometimes two dollars. You have to imagine, like wow. two dollars on a stock that is like a hundred bucks or like hundred fifty bucks. Two dollars spread, crazy. like in, in in insane. Really, I was like, and then their customer support was like, you got like, and then I was like complaining, and you get like these robotic um, mechanic automated answers that you know literally don't care about you as a customer. So really bad experience, like horrible. It was really horrible. Okay. So. Um, so that's the red um, flag, bad customer support, bad spreads, two instant red horrible flags. Horrible spread, yes, exactly. For me, also kind of red flag is when uh, prop firms limit you as a trader in terms of product availability. Why do they remove all the products and offer like only FX and a few C, um, few equity indices and maybe gold and silver? And that's it. I'm also, this is because a lot of these prop firms, they use equity, they use um, 8 cap as a broker, right? So they could just give everyone all the products like 8cap, don't remove basically, don't change the spreads, just offer this ECN environment, best environment for the trader to trade, but they change things. So this is like, this is flaggy to me. This is really like, why would they do that if not to for their own benefit to, be, to like make people fail, right? So agreed. And I think that, I mean, I'm I don't, I'm not familiar with VST. I think you said it is the vision. Yeah. The, Vision stock. Vision stock. Uh, it's a really is, new, also new one. Yes, they approached me actually to. They, nice. they wanted me like. Yeah, so the guy flew out there, yeah. signed the contract. Yeah, and exactly. Everything. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's on very Instagram. cool. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Is, is it also with them a one phase like surge? Well, I had a. I don't. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know about their normal Challenge. environment for normal traders. You're getting yes, special I treatment my, now, aren't I, you, Brian? I <laughs> I had a special treatment there, so nice. I had a contract in the beginning. I only said like I'm gonna do that if I get a if I can a little bit alter the rules. So yes, yep. But that's that's the privileged position that guys like you and me are in. We can go into some of these firms yeah. and make a good deal. And you know, I appreciate yes. Search too because I know you spoke with Corey. He's a great guy. I love Corey, and he's yeah, yes. taken he's taken some of my feedback, and they've already implemented it because I I met with them a few months ago, and I said you know really. If we're trading crypto, I should not have to close on a Friday. I need to hold this over the – and then two weeks yeah. later, they announced that we can hold over the weekend. You know, So I think that's a great sign on like not a red flag but a green flag is the firms that are mm -hmm. adapting and changing and 100%. making it better for the trader. 100%. I had to do the $1, one million challenge um, during the old environment where I had to close my trades on oh. Friday. This was oh. – it was really like a little bit of a pain. But you know, I thought, okay, because look, 
um, we are using this basically, this prop trading, we as a company, we are using this to as a filter system. So people can literally filter because right nowadays in the education space has like kind of, you know, it's really hard for people to find a needle in the haystack, so to say, to find something that is legit, trust, trustworthy and credible. And I think the prop space is a nice filtering system. So you basically see if we basically advertise with, hey, we are funded traders, we have payouts. This is like makes us immediately, you know, way on top of the list of, uh, you know, um, I agree. So I, I'm doing uh, so with my mentorship group. I do some, I have education yeah. similar to you. We, yeah. of course, like pride ourselves on the reviews that the traders who come in and they say they want to get funded. We have a 12 week intense coaching program where we try to help them pass that challenge That's or at least nice. get yeah. close to done in the 12 weeks. And like you said, it is a great filtering process to see like who has some of the characteristics that successful mm -hmm. traders have. And then you can help that trader scale. I mean, you're a great example of that. I've got that guy, guy James that I've coached. He's over a million dollars in funding now too. So I nice. think that that is a, a great thing that we have going here in this business. Now, what do you think about the future of prop firms? Because now you've seen, this is interesting. You've seen the progression of technology when it comes to trading. You've seen spreads get mm -hmm. better, commissions get better, all of these things. You've seen that get better. And we're seeing some of it happen in the prop firm space now. But do you have any thoughts about what is the future of the prop firm space? Do you see more firms? Do you see less firms, more regulation? Less? What do you, what do you think about that? Well, I think... Um the prop firm space will make eventually retail brokerage obsolete. Yeah, that's because what I think too. Why would you trade your own money if I can now trade 2.4 million US dollars, which is basically risk-free, which it's literally risk-free. It's not my own money. So I don't have um, any, I, the money that I lose is not my money. I don't have any risks except for purchasing the evaluations, the exams, the tests, right? However you want to call it, the auditions. So and um, why would you trade your own money? If you can trade, you trade for a prop firm. And then I would also um, argue if you if you cannot, like this is what I was, what I, I always speak, I like to make a um, metaphorically speaking, this, these auditions, these, these uh, challenges, they're your driver's license, right? With them, you are allowed to drive the Ferrari on the street. Now, if you don't pass the driving license and you still going to sit in that Ferrari, eventually you're going to crash it, right? Only if you have this kind of gambling attitude that you are more like a gambler and you say, I, I will not pass the driving, driving driver license anyway. I'll put my own money on it and I'm trying to, my strategy is based on hopium and I, I'm trying to double or triple my money. But then this is gambling <laughs> attitude. This is not trading and they will lose eventually as anyway. So um, I, but I think for all professional traders who really take the serious retail brokerages, this will make it obsolete 100%. I think that's very well said. Let's go into that a little bit more there with the, uh, the, the, the thought process of some of your like overcoming hardship, overcoming lessons, and then building yourself into this well-rounded trader because you do teach other traders. So I'm curious, what do you think are the most important characteristics that winning traders need to have? It's just, it's, it's basically, it's, it's always about, you know, uh, dedication, being disciplined, being able to stick to rules, being able to follow rules, right? Mm -hmm. Having also, you know, I mean, everybody heard that, right? Trading is not a sprint, it's a marathon. That commitment over years, even, um, you know, there, there will be obstacles on the way, right? But it's, it's also about then still being consistent. You know, we always, we always teach people when we say, yeah, your rules have to be consistent. You have to trade consistent. That's only one side of the medal, right? The other side is like, you have to consistently practice and evolve and get better. And, you know, you see a lot of people who think they have this kind of entrepreneurial spirit. They they want to be entrepreneurs. And we, 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 as traders, we run a business if eventually that's what we are doing. So we are entrepreneurs. A lot of people, they have that notion that they feel like they're entrepreneurs, but they are not because at the end you go to bed with your trades. You wake up with your trades. <laughs> you have your trades on your mind. Trading is on your mind 24 seven. That's how it is like to be like, to do like a little bit of retalk, right? And also you have to go through the bad times and we all had bad times. We all have bad times. We all have losing streaks. That's how it is. That's trading, right? We have statistical losses. That's how trading is. That's how trading but, works, you know, right? 
right? There are there are yeah. traders out there that sell their education and they say we don't take losses, which is literally the yeah, opposite of what good traders it's, do. Yeah, this is that's why. Yeah, that's why this business, you know, it's it's so hard sometimes to really filter, and that's why it has such a bad. That's why it has a little bit of a bad reputation. Obviously, the trading education space because you have there's no regulation. That's the problem, right? It's like if you want to become a pilot, if you want to become a doctor, if you want to become any kind of a lawyer. I mean, there are schools that you go to. You have that. Um, you have exams. You are you, you have certificates. But as a trader, you don't. Everybody can you know open a school. That's the problem. Everybody can open a school or teach trading, and this is what makes it, you know, that what gets it like that bad reputation kind of, and for people so hard, people who have no experience to filter what is real and what is basically just show. And most of the stuff is just show, unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, especially so, um, where you're at right now in Dubai, everybody just rents a Ferrari and says, buy my course. And now uh, you're going to have a Ferrari like me. You know, it's so funny that you say it because our office is based in a really nice building um, down here at the Bush Khalifa district. So it's called the Opus. It's a really iconic building. And in front of that building, you, you every other day, you see like this 20 plus year old guy with a rented Lamborghini, somebody else holding a camera. He's oh standing in front God. of the Lamborghini in, in front of the building and making like, you know, like, <laughs> oh God, yeah, that's really, so it's cringy, so bro. It's so, cr yeah, it's so cringy. It's so cringy. And that people still are, that there are still people out there that are attracted to that kind of advertising, that of kind of approach to that business. Ah, it's helpless. It's, it's, it's tough, sorry. And I think, no, you're, don't, don't be sorry. And as a traditional guy, this is why I like to know your background, being brought up in a small village in Germany, you probably are a guy, I mean, you're an older guy like myself. You have a mm -hmm. wife, you said, like, morals are important. Doing right by your neighbor, having uh, if you say something, you mean it. If I tell you, you have my word, you have my, like being about your word, that does not happen nowadays. And that's why you have these kids that they don't have a, a, a soul. They'll sell their soul for a picture of them next to this rented Lamborghini to make 50 grand on their course this week. But then long-term, what does that do for their name? They don't care. They have no morals. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree that like the morality in business, especially in our business is just um, out the window? It doesn't exist. It just yeah. doesn't exist. It's it's just yeah, it doesn't exist. No, because you probably have seen horrible. too, like the yeah. the scams. Yeah. I had but before the verification thing. I had people use my pictures and people send them money and they don't even research to see if it's the real me and they just get scammed. No yeah. more horrible. Just... I don't know. Like yeah, this is a different topic, obviously. But I know nowadays, like every every other day, there's like a fake profile of myself that is like basically same thing. trying to trying to scam people and if you yep. if you try to compl complain to to instagram they tell you they we don't care do anything it's like yeah, yeah, they, they don't, don't care, care. It's, like, it's like literally yeah. people but, are getting scammed for 10 15 20 thousand 50 thousand dollars and you don't mm, care yeah okay that that says a lot about you instagram facebook you know what yeah, i mean yeah i know i know unfortunately that's true but we still depend on that right because you need it for our marketing we, yeah that's why we have to do it yeah. but and then for guys yeah. like us i mean like my approach are you are you familiar with gary vaynerchuk no, I, the name sounds kind of familiar. He's a but famous I don't know. marketing guy, media guy. He always like, I learned a lot from him about building a personal brand and that goes into building a business. Okay. What I do is personal brand. And he always said, you can build the tallest building by just building it or you can build the tallest building by tearing everybody else down. And I've always chose to just grind my way. I'm not going to flash you or talk shit and beef with other traders and cause internet beef and stuff. I'm just going to do my own thing and I'm going to slowly build. Yeah. And that's why it's taken me five years to gain a decent following. But I am glad that I did it this way, like the way you're doing yours, because that means we build something that we have forever. It's built on good morals. People trust you. They trust your name, your brand. They trust the things you back, the things you say. When you sell your soul just for a couple of likes or for a quick sale, nobody trusts you long term, you know? Yes. I mean, look, I told you before the podcast started, I mean, that's a premiere for me because it's my first podcast with another trader. I actually try to, uh, yeah, I really try to avoid other traders who knows who I, because, um, and because I just focus on myself, right? Yeah. I focus on, 
on me i don't follow any other tra traders like you're also the first person that because you you approached me so nicely and it was really uh you had really this humble down-to-earth approach i really appreciate that that and i then checked your pictures you know i saw you well you know your I wife think... and your kids you know it's really I... was was just like a normal guy and we are all normal guys you know i That's regardless it. of how much money we make we are still normal guys and you know this all this whole show of stuff it's just not my thing it's just not no my and thing. It's like show off for what to make people hate you to make people like, no, that's never, I'd rather go about it. Like the way that I'm glad you appreciated my approach because now I, I can build connections. Like I have traders that I would say are not mentors, but more like friends, like even colleagues that are featured in market wizards books. Like I've had Tom Basso, who's ran a $300 million hedge fund. You and me think we're big with our million, couple million in funding. This dude ran mm. 300 million and I can get yes, on a yes, yes. phone call with him at any time. Yes. But why do I – like I gained that respect because of like you said, I'm going about it the right way. You build the brand the right way. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate yeah. you acknowledging that. Now, I want to transition yeah. to a slightly different topic, strategy. Yes. Since we are both traders, we're both active in markets, can you talk to us a little bit about what markets you prefer to trade? I know you said futures and ES Mini and SPX. So are you still trading indices and then swing trading or day trading? So um, I would say I trade literally everything. So um, – my my preference is equity indices and stocks. So in this case, CFD stocks, but also uh, commodities, gold, silver, uh, crude oil, natural gas, literally everything. And uh, not so much FX, like not so much real currencies, even though la the the <laughs> the search trader audition, I had like one really good USD Swiss franc trade where I with this trade, I passed the audition, but it's really rare that I trade, trade a position on like a currency pair. I'm like more like the index and uh, stocks guy. I think 80% 80, 80 of my positions are from there and 20% on commodities, I would say gold, silver, natural gas, and uh, sometimes even crude oil. So that's the market. So um, I also th think that when it comes to trading markets, I also don't believe in people who say, they are professional traders and then they just trade one market or one asset class. I have my doubt. This is for me. This is for me, red flag. You know, if somebody says I'm a currency professional, I'm, I'm a FX or currency uh, FX professional trader. Well, well, you have something that is called cross asset correlations, multi asset correlations. You should understand how <laughs> equity indices affect maybe treasuries, how treasuries affect currencies, and so on and so forth, right? How gold affects dollar and vice versa. So you have like this something multi called multi asset correlations. And as a trader, as a professional trader, you have to be aware of that as well because you can use this to your benefit. I think um, they cop out just benefit. on that point. I think they, I think a lot of people cop out. They don't know how the correlations work. So then they go, I'm just yeah. going to not pay attention to it. And I'm just going to trade Forex. Well, you're really doing that was, and that was me. I only know that because that's uh, me in my beginning mm -hmm. of my career. And it was complicated. I wasn't trained at a bank. I didn't have a mentor to teach me. It was hard to mm -hmm. understand these correlations. Yeah. But then when you st stare at the chart and you study things for eight years every day, you start to start, you pick up on them. And as different market cycles change, you pick up on it. So I think a lot of people say that out of ignorance. So I agree, definite red flag. So yeah. Yeah. Back to what you were saying. So the uh, the timing of the trading, more swing trading, that's more the market. Trading. So um, I would say also uh, it's mostly swing trading. So yeah. we have we have our own terminology. We differentiate between daily income and weekly income. Weekly income you would refer to it as swing trading, and daily income you would refer to it as day trading. And then we have scalping. So let's put scalping. Uh, we can throw this out of the window right into the garbage can. It's just nonsense, right? So uh, like scalping, I would say everything between like between one minute and five minutes. It's not scalable. It's not long-term sustainable. So that's my, my take It's on stressful. That. so that, That's what that is. Scalping it's is stressful, stressful as well. It's also super stressful, even though in my beginning, I was also trading, I have to admit, five-minute charts. You can learn a lot from uh, price action movement and price movement in general on the lower time frames as well. But on the long run, also in terms of scalability, no way. You know, you can scalp maybe with $50, but try to scalp with $2.4 million, right? It's like, yeah, uh, be my guest. All right. right. So um, <laughs> scalping, no way. Um, so day trading is like, execution time frame i would say something between 60 minutes and 240 minutes so this is for us then or for me then i would consider daily income slash day trading so yes i do that as well this is basically where we kind of um refine where i would say refine the time and refine the time frame from a daily chart 
into maybe a 240 minute chart to find like a real imbalance to time the market to get a better risk to reward proposition. And this is then how I would maybe place my trade. So it's like a combination of both, but eventually I hold my trades usually for a couple of days and weeks. So you could refer it me to as a swing trader slash maybe a little bit of day trader guy. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great insight. When it you sense, look yeah. Yeah, it makes 100% sense. When you look for swing trades, a lot of people are going to be thinking, okay, does he set a certain number of, because you said you trade a lot, anything, you'll trade any asset, which if and, my yeah. listeners go back to my episode a few weeks ago with Tom Basso, that's what Tom recommends is he talks about his new book, which is called The All Weather Trader. Okay. And The All Weather Trader is someone who says the trend is in spy. We should be trading spy. Now the trend is in commodities. We need to go to commodities. Yes. Then, you know, and that's, so then that's exactly what you were saying. So yes. when you're looking around, at so many different potential markets, depending on where we're at with rates and where we're at in the cycle and what are currencies, what are the core, how many trades per week will you look for? Do you have a set number or will you just trade what presents and, and whatever shows up that week? That you just said it. I trade what the market gives me basically, right? You cannot say I have two trades a week, three trades a week. Sometimes you maybe have not one trade a week. It's just really what the market presents, what the market gives you, right? Based on your set of rules. Yeah, I love that. What do you think, yeah. if you could give us an idea of like, your daily routine because now we understand you're not forcing a certain number of trades per week we know yeah. you're looking for these swing trades we know you're running the business in the office here so give us an idea yeah. of like day in the life of burned day in the life of burned is really boring <laughs> <laughs> as it should be good good trading no, yeah, is boring yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes and we live by the slogan uh, set and forget and get alive so right that's why um um, trading itself once you're profession professional so trading in general should never replace one nine to five job right so if you had a one nine to five in, in the beginning then you don't want to replace it with trading trading should give you more freedom in terms of time as well that's what we had. that's why we are trading right so yeah. um active trading so for me so i also have to kind of differentiate this a little bit if i really only do the, the active trading, then I would need maybe 15 minutes to an hour per day on average, 15 minutes to an hour. But since I'm really like, I love the charts, Austin, I just love it. And I cannot remember one day in the past 10 years where I, where I was not checking the charts, literally, you know, yep. um, it's just, I, I love it. I'm just so addicted to the charts in general, just to, to look at it, right? I love it. I really love it. I, I genuinely love it. So um, but that's why sometimes in the evening, I'm just looking, I mean, following the markets, the equity indices, and then look what the stocks are doing. Always have an, I always have an eye on the market, basically. I think you have active to. Active trading. Y yes, yes and no. I mean, it's a fine line between, hey, put your mobile away. Uh, right. <laughs> but you know what? There are certain times, there's certain times mm -hmm. where like, like last night I was watching for this Bitcoin move to see if we were going to retrace the big bounce yesterday. Yeah. And I wake up two or three times in the middle of the night, not to take a leak, okay. but to look at my phone and I want to see, did it move while I was asleep? And that's yes, like, you, yes. I'm, I'm that addicted. I'm that passionate about it. Yeah. So unfortunately I can totally me relate. as well. Like, the night waking up at night and looking at your mobile and see it like that's a that's a problem i'm working on <laughs> i know me too but you know what do we want to work on it bro because what if it makes us more money what if that is the thing that then yeah keeps i us know prop, you know so it's like i uh... know sometimes it might sometimes it might happen it also depends like where you live in terms of time frame sure right um right now for us you see it's getting dark out there it's now 7 p.m. So the market opened uh, one and a half hours ago. Or so right, 5:30 Dubai time. So yes, literally one and a half hours ago. So it's a good time. So the market here in Dubai, the U.S. market closes rough midnight. So it's also then you know you can calm down, you can go to sleep, you will not miss anything because then you know Asian time frame and so on. Um, there's not they're not big usually they're not such a big movements during that sure. time so it's okay when i yeah. sleep but still i'm still checking the charts. i know i know me too but oh, i want to go back to it really quick to the to the schedule give us like the idea do you go to hit the gym at the same so, time? so yeah sorry I, I completely yeah so no, yes, no no it's okay so 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 usually in the morning um so what when i wake up i'm, I'm an early bird so yeah. i get up 6 6 30 and uh the first thing I do is usually um, get a cup of coffee, switch on my PC, uh, my my home office basically, um, switch on my PC, check email, just normal like business stuff, right? Office um, and um, for our company and um, check the charts, obviously, first thing in the morning as well, see what happened overnight, if anything happened. And um, then I then I hit the gym every day literally right so very active person um i need that also this is like gym and trading it's like 
my passion and then I hit the gym and then um, I come back and then it's like maybe 10, 11 and then I continue, you know, running the business basically. And um, in the evenings, this is basically focus on this is where I keep the schedule free, like starting from 5 p.m. So 5.30 p.m. right now depending on daylight saving, but 5 p.m. the Dubai, uh, the, the U.S. So 5.30 Dubai, uh, the U.S. market opens. So 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. I keep my schedule always free just to see if anything happens, if I can engage somewhere, equity indice-wise, stock-wise. And this is where I'm then clued in because I like it. I, I'm just trading or, I'm, or looking at, let's call it looking at charts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that that's that's a good distinction because a lot of people will be like, are you trading all the time you're at the desk? No, we're scanning. No, I mean, no, would, no, you, no. Would, would you agree that, the best traders generate more ideas than trades they actually take. Oh, I've never thought about that. Take um, like you spend more time playing with different ideas. Oh, this this could be long. This could be short. How could this play out? Like we did last night with Bitcoin. Yeah, in our group I'm. Chat. Yeah, I mean, what I yeah, I'm still just randomly drawing lines on my charts and see like what's happening. It's just like you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. might that. be a little different um, for you because you're swing trading and like you spend two or three days in a trade sometimes. And then the time mm -hmm. could equate to where there might be two or three days where you're just doing analysis and waiting for a trade, right? Yes. I mean, the analysis usually is pretty quick. But I'm done just placing the trades and waiting for that trade to come into fruition, basically. It's just then, yes, but the analysis part is then rather quick. Yeah, pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah. But yes, what, yes, that's true. What do you credit to your teaching as far as like what taught you how to trade? You know, some guys I talk to them, they say, I'm just an EMA guy. Some guys are like, I learned from Bill O'Neill. Do you have anyone that you credit to like teaching you how to trade like a mentor? Well, yes, uh, but um, well, I, I don't want to uh, say names here That's okay. um, uh, because they don't want to be named i think and and are these the people um, that worked one, like in the firm like you mentioned earlier and, back and, in the day and, and yeah on the ex on the exchange i had one i had one mentor uh bob dunn he was like um he was he just recently passed away um um unfortunately he was i was really close with him like he, not only a mentor he was a friend I'm sorry to um, hear that. and 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 um uh, he came even to Dubai once. Uh, we have a picture up on the Bush Khalifa where I showed him Dubai, and he was like a really big uh, floor trader on the on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So he was my mentor. We were friends, and then he unfortunately passed a couple of weeks ago. He I'm passed sorry away. To hear that. So I'm sorry. Yeah, um, but yes, um, um, yes. So all of them are kind of older generation because they were like former floor traders. And this I'm is jealous, bro. I'm became jealous. a dying species. Yeah, yeah, they're like no, the, I, the, the, the. You know what I mean? Like, there's nobody like that anymore. Nowadays, everybody nobody, just says, yes. "Yeah, I learned from this course." Yes, yes, that's a, that's also a problem. It's also a problem. It's, it's also a problem yeah. for sure. Imagine what it was like to be on the floor back in the day, bro, with the hand signals and yeah. the screaming. It would be so amazing yes. to learn from those different guys. environment, and you understand the markets much better. You you understand what moves the market. You understand yeah, what the market on yeah. on a when you say that you mean more on like a psychological basis of market participants, right? Also, yes, and of course, like in terms of order flow, right? Big orders sure. coming in, Goldman Sachs buying, um, uh, um, you know, market's going to go up because they are buying a, uh, a yeah. shitload of stocks, uh, shares, of right, for instance, right? right? So you can <laughs> see that big order market goes up. It, it was like a real time level two. Exact, exactly a real time and not a fake one level two, right? It's like exactly. not like they have to disguise no the numbers, like a, yeah, exactly, right? So, yeah. um, so yeah, you literally see what's happening and why ma the market is moving. So, I love um, that your experience yeah. is is uh, I'm I'm envious of your experience and the people oh, you connected with. Do you, do you have anybody that you look to today? Like I always recommend, like Mike Bellafiore, he runs SMB Capital. Do you have anybody that you're like really connected with that we could share with the listeners of like check out this book? It's really helped me, or there's podcast. It's really helped. Anything like that? Literally, I have to say, I would say it, but literally, there's nothing. I've okay. since the beginning, I focus only on myself. I've never followed anyone. I've never like online. I'm. It's just there's nothing, right? I That's mean. It's worked for Psychologic, you. Psychologic, I mean, discipline-wise, right? There are books out there like uh, Trading in the Zone and stuff. I start yeah, from, I, I, what is the name? I can't remember. But Mark Douglas. Popular. Yeah, Mark Douglas, like, like Trading in the Zone. You know, I started that maybe halfway through. Yes. I mean, also when it's- A little fluffy for you, huh? Too, too much fluff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when it comes to psychology, all of this makes sense. But I'm a firm believer that whatever I tell you in terms of be disciplined, 
to be disciplined. Don't, don't move your stop loss. Don't do this. Don't do that. You have to fight your inner demons yourself. You have to experience the pain yourself. Otherwise, you're not going to change it. You might appreciate what I'm going to tell you. You might say, you might acknowledge the fact that this exists, but you're going to make these mistakes anyway. Right? So, and you make them maybe once, you make them maybe twice. And if it's too painful, you're going to stop doing it. Right. And then you have to fight your inner demon for the rest of your life. But you have to experience it yourself. That's why I'm not a huge fan of all that psychology stuff, because you have to kind of figure it out yourself. You're the only one who can solve that. Is it ever something you fully solve? No, I'm impossible. Right. So I was going to say, right. So then... you, you can you cannot be you cannot be. We are human beings. We are emotional beings. But this is what it's like. It's a double edged sword because it's it makes us, you know, pushing to a new heights, new limits. Yes. But also we have to basically, because we always want to scale, we always have money at risk. So it, we always have to fight that inner demon, demon constantly not to do stupid things, right? Because we have money at risk and we, we're going to be emotional because of fear and greed and all this kind of stuff that we all know about, right? But we have to be fully aware of that fact that we have, we can never fully solve it because we are human beings. And I think that the fact that we can never fully solve it also for at least for guys like you and me, that keeps us here. The fact that it's like this never ending unsolvable puzzle on the technical side and on the psychological yes. side. And then you add in the fundamentals and it's this mixture that you're constantly trying to balance yourself in markets. It's, it's never, it's a never ending problem. It's like a, a Rubik's yes. cube that you can never solve. You know, you just love it because you just keep playing with it. What are you yeah. big into meditation or yoga or anything like that? As far as like, you know, keeping your mind clear and keeping yourself it's on my list, to be honest. I always wanted to, you know, for me, med meditation is like going to the mountains, hiking, doing sports, exercise. Yeah. This is kind of my meditation, but I'm Same. having this on my agenda that apparently it should. It, I, Can I give you a recommendation? Like, yes, please, please. Yes. I, I use the Waking Up app. It's Waking Up. Okay. It's, it's uh, from Sam Harris. He's the one that walks you through it every morning. It's really interesting, bro. It's 10 minutes. I only do the 10 minutes. Okay. I do it every morning before I sit in the love sack right there. And I just, right before I get okay. to the desk. And so, I, I enjoy it because I'm a fast guy, bro. And like, I used to be the kind of trader that would come to the desk. And if something is there, even if it's right when I got to the desk, I didn't look through everything else or whatever, I'll take it. I act too quickly. But the meditation helps me be like, all right, slow down. Where are we right now? Do we need to be in right now? Can we wait a second? Is this the best price? Is this the right asset, yeah. right time? What's news saying? I got to see all these other variables. So I think the meditation has helped me slow down. I, I think you, so yeah, definitely check that out. Waking up. It's, I it's have an to, app. I have to. Yeah. It's on my bucket list because I think it might help me as well, because I'm also like a kind of, I can get emotional. Right. It's also, yeah. you, dude, you could take the app, go out there to the desert, sit on one of them sand dunes and, <laughs> and, and zen out a little bit. What, what's the, uh, what's the lifestyle stuff? Like I, did I see on your Instagram, you were recently hiking or rock climbing. Am I making that up? Yeah, that that's what I'm doing. No, no, that's true. That's what I'm doing during the weekends right now. It's now, now it's summertime. It's getting really, really hot. Like 45, 50 degrees. Dude, you could uh, cook an egg on the sidewalk. I heard I, you could, there, you could, but it's all, but it's also, you know, like it's, uh, yeah, it's I I still like it. I still like it because you feel like the I like the I heat. don't know. It's just I live in Florida, bro. Heat. I came here for the heat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah, you are, yeah, yeah. You know the heat then in this case. So I love it as well. So uh, better hot than cold. No, no, I like that. So lifestyle is just you know Dubai lifestyle is basically for me at least it's uh, um, beaches, uh, uh, pools, hotels, stuff like this. Like this is what you do. Um, yeah. Are you a car no. guy? Are you into cars? Not at all, to be honest. I, I walked in, I, you know, I, I, I am coming originally from the automotive, right? Right. Um, it was, yeah, but it was actually never my thing. Like literally no. never my thing. No. Yeah. Cause you I'm, said earlier, you were like, I just did the job to make money. It was when you said that it was funny. It reminded me of when my dad and I talk about like life right now, my dad's 70 years old. He's like, you know, when I was your age, nobody did a job because they liked it. You did the job because mm -hmm. it paid well and you had to do it. You didn't have to love it. You just shut up and did it. You know, and that's kind of like what you yeah. were saying. You're like, I didn't yeah, love yeah. it. it was... Yeah, yeah, you did it because yeah, everybody else because you got to do follow. it. It's just, a, yeah, you got to do it. Yeah. And I learned very early on, you don't invest in depreciating assets, right? <laughs> Dude, 100%. Cars the, the most depreciating asset. <laughs> but it's still like, it's, uh, you know, you drive decent cars, yes, but you know, you don't go over the top. It's just like for me, nonsense. It's just me too. anyway, for me, it's like driving the car is like 
sometimes I do even home office. It's like going to the office back and forth, you know, going right. to the beach. It's just like, uh, especially when you're running, B, I'm not really, uh, dude, and you're running a business, you're, you have big goals with your business and I'm the same yes. way. It's like that money can just be spent on other things. I've always felt like it, until even at the, like, you have to really be passionate, I think, about those material things. And I didn't get that. My mother is like that, but I did not get that from her enough, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not healthy if you're too much into that, I agree. right? I think. I agree. Um, um, so that's why I always think, okay, how how can we improve the business? How can we add here something, there something? So, yeah, it's just, I'd rather put it into the business in general than, you know, spending on materialist, materialistic Which, stuff. Yes, I, I like to, I like, I like nice shoes. I like stuff, you know, I like, yeah. for me, literally, literally, I have to say, you know, for me, luxury, the most luxury thing is literally because I'm so health concerned, sport con sports concerned, you know, I'm like a healthy person, like yeah. buying, buying healthy food, like, yes, like organic meat, organic, yes. you know, everything like this is for me, like luxury that I can, and I can go out then I can go out for dinner, for lunch, whenever I want. You, you get right. my point? Like same. I, I don't have to look what I'm going to eat. Like I can go to the restaurant every single day if I want to. This is for me, pure luxury. That is luxury. Right? So, I agree a hundred percent. My wife and I, she's pregnant right now with our first kid and uh, she doesn't awesome. cook normally often as, uh, as it is. I've had different meal preps. We've eaten, I eat out almost every meal. She makes me a smoothie every morning, which I appreciate after my workout and everything. <laughs> but like, other yeah. than that, we do a lot of eating out too. Cause for me, that is, that is the luxury. I don't need car, car, yeah. A, B, whatever, but the yeah. food and the health. And like, for me working out, bro, I, I just bought, um, have you ever seen the compression boots that you can sit in for like recovery? Have you ever seen I've those? I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes. Yes. Like for, yeah, for really like, uh, athletes, they, they use it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I bought them for my house. I got them in the house. Now. Oh, wow. So like that's yeah. the money I'll spend on extra shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff like that, yeah. that actually helps my health. It helps me recover faster. So yeah, I yeah. can go work out. Like, look, I got this thing too. Check this out. You'll like this for when you're really sore. I got this super fancy oh, yeah. massage gun. You know, this is like a $500 yeah, yeah. massage gun. No, you know, so oh, that's wow, where yeah, the, yeah. the luxury comes. This is my Ferrari of massage guns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, even my brother, he's now getting into like, um, he's going to, a, he, he also lives in Dubai. He is, uh, with us here, um, at online nice. trading campus. He's also trading. He's also FTMO verified. So nice. he's, um, he's now, he's always going to a gym now where he has an ice bath. And he's now so much into because he lis listens to podcasts like Andrew Huberman and Huberman, of course, of course, bro. Of yes, course. You know, I'm listening to this. This is look. This is stuff I'm listening to. This is stuff I'm listening. I'm not listening to trading nonsense. No, me too. To, me too. Like, I told how you can I, I, how can how I optimize? how can I improve my my yeah. health? How can I optimize yeah. my my well being? This is what I what I'm also passionate about. So he's well, getting into this. I, it, it's time that is the currency, and health goes yes. right with time. Money comes yes. and goes, but it's yes. time. Yes, yes, yes. I still want to be super active and healthy when I'm 60, 70, you know, and you you have to work on that now. Uh, this is getting Absolutely. into another, it's getting different podcast. This is podcast now. part two. Yeah, because, <laughs> but you know what? This is a great point to end on because like for the traders yeah. who get caught up as a new trader, you're staring at the screen, drinking energy drinks, doing your doing harm to your body yeah. and your mind. You got to yes. see the longer term. Uh, of course, like you and me, we want to be athletes at 60 and a byproduct of being in shape and still working out at 60 will be that we can also still trade if we choose to. You yes, know what I mean? 100%. That will just happen yes. because you're taking care of your mind and body now. So it is very, very mm -hmm. important. Yes, absolutely. I fully agree. Yes. Burn. I think it's more, more important than your health. Yes. You are a great guy. I'm very, Thank very Thank you, Austin. I likewise. No, I really appreciate the, the chat. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. We could have done another hour. But, I, I was uh, just going to say that. Let's, I... let's see if people appreciate Let's see if people appreciate the the uh, the podcast. And uh, if they want to see another one, we can definitely do another one, talk more about the strategy itself and stuff. You know, go, Dude, get you more technical. Words. Exactly. Right? <laughs> we could do some screen share next time. We could definitely do that. You took the words yeah. out of my mouth. Yeah. I always end the podcast by saying for our listeners, just drop comments on YouTube. Shoot me a DM. Shoot me an email. Let me know what you want us to talk about. You want to see some strategy, some screen share. Tell us in the comments and we'll bring Burns back on in a couple of months maybe. And we'll, we'll touch base as we get closer to the end of 2023. See how the year is wrapping up. Do some stuff like that. I'd love to meet your brother too it seems like you the two of you together is probably like the uh the new you you guys are like the when the tate brothers andrew tate and his brother were out in dubai it was like burned and his brother versus andrew tate and tristan uh, tate. the brothers <laughs> taking over dubai out here uh, uh, yeah we are not so much you know like social media is just like we just use it because we have to use it but of we are course. not like so we, uh, no you don't have however many supercars <laughs> right 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 yeah <laughs>
Instead, you have a real business with with real employees that is, I think, more valuable exactly. than super cars. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Exactly. It's not sure. But this has been yeah. great. This has been great, Bird. Thank I you, really Austin. appreciate Cheers. it again. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise. For our listeners, make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you guys stay tuned for our next episode. We really appreciate you listening in, Burned, Thank you for staying up for us. Be safe in Dubai, and we will see you in the next episode. For our listeners, thank you very much. We'll see you guys in the next one as well. Thank you, Austin. Happy and safe trading.